Dear God, please prepare me today for the plans you have for my tomorrow. I'm ready for the growth required and fears I must face. Strengthen me like never before and help me see beyond my comfort. Teach me when to rest in you and how to stretch for you. Sign, ready to be used. I, I want to just bring Sarah back. Just, just, just come on up here. Come on up here and just, come on, let's thank God. Her testimony, her writing, her words are such a blessing. Just share with us. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Because if y'all start shouting, my voice gets higher, it's not good. Just sit down. Wow, what an incredible time. Pastors and Leaders is always one of my favorite conferences to come to because I know when you all leave here that you're better leaders, better pastors, and more importantly, I think that a part of you becomes better fathers and mothers. And so tomorrow I'm going to be in my session and my topic is Lost in the Pews, Found in the World. I wrote that it's difficult to accept pure love when you think you don't deserve it. There's this concept that we're trying to make people define what unconditional love is, but maybe it's not that we don't believe in it. Maybe it's just we don't believe we deserve a love that unconditional, that is broken and damaged and hurt as we have been that it would be impossible to receive a love that unconditional because we know how human we are. It's just because like my book, people are like reading my book and stuff, it's just a lot to take in. Like, that's how pe like, I know, a lot it's a of lot. people in the I was like, I, I wrote it, I didn't think people were gonna read it, I don't know. <laughs> this really come a long way. I'm proud, I'm proud of you, I, that's, you know, I'm just, that's cool. It's, it's, yeah, it's a long way. Yeah, well, you're in the right family to do it. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you had the lion with Bishop Jakes. Now you're about to get the lioness. As a multi-level communications brand, Sarah's work can be found everywhere, from bookstores to online, even on the big screen. Without further ado, I bring you Sarah Jakes. I will give you all a fair warning. I am not a minister, I am a ministry. That means I've taken all of the things in my life that I thought would at one point hurt me or harm me, keep me from grace, and used it to help other people. When I first started speaking and people kind of started identifying with my message, my biggest concern was like, I didn't realize why people were connecting with me. My siblings used to have like shouting competitions and I just, it wasn't me. Like I, I didn't know how to do it. And so it really made me feel like I, I didn't belong in church. Like I don't sing, I, the Bible was boring. I keep it real, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Like at that age, like the Bible wasn't that interesting to me. And then when I had my son at 14, for me it really felt like, well this is just even more confirmation that you don't really fit. That you don't really belong in this mega family, mega preacher church thing. And so um, it's, that's why I can't believe that I'm doing a session here. <laughs> Every time I speak, I'm so nervous leading up to it that it makes me feel like I should never do it again. It makes me feel like, you know, if you have to go through all of this process, maybe you don't really deserve this opportunity. There's always one person or several people who say something, whether it's like a tweet or a blog that I'm not sure about, someone says something that reminds me why God is using me. Y'all can't just get your book signed. I didn't think y'all was coming. <laughs> pastor comes up to me and he said, um, you made me call and apologize to my daughter. For the first time, I really saw it from her side. It was a beautiful moment for me to be able to give a voice to those people who are trying and whose own cry for help is stuck in their voice. Go 
We love you, Sarah. We yeah, love you, Sarah. Right. Thank you all so much. Awesome job. The only mistake there is is one that you don't learn from. Her interpretation of grace is really getting ready to revolutionize the world. I've been you know, looking for love in all the wrong areas. That's a personal and touchy subject, but that's something that let me know that God's grace and His favor, His unmerited favor, is something that is for all of us. It was very inspiring. It just showed that even with adversity, you can still overcome knowing that God is on your side. It wasn't an easy walk. It still isn't easy, but with God, I know I can do all things. Just um, dealing with infidelity in a marriage and what and the outcome of it, and hiding it for so long, and um, she's just kind of giving me the courage to know that I, I can't, I don't need to hide it anymore. Wow, I think our life is a series of lost and found moments. And the important part is to understand that those moments are to grow us and to build perseverance. I think a personal one of mine is my husband and I battling infertility and being able to adopt our daughter. There are many, many ways to win. And I think that Sarah shines a light on that ability. Join the Lost and Found movement! I think to myself, what do you want the person to take away from your book, from your story? What is the message you want to leave them with? And it dawned on me that I got this tattoo of Grace on my shoulder and that maybe Grace had been there the whole time. That all while I was going through my process and being lost, that Grace was on my shoulder. And it was so much bigger than a tattoo, but I was walking with God's grace every single day and didn't even realize it. And my task was to take that grace and to use it. And every day, I tried to live a life that honors the grace that is on my shoulders. Dear God, I haven't always been the most grateful and I've taken many things for granted. Still, you've been gracious enough to wait for me to realize you were in control. My heart is grateful for every tear that brought me to my knees, every struggle that broke my pride. Signed, Walking with Grace. They called the police on me and stuff, and I was, and the officer said, ma'am, what seems to be the problem here? I said, well, my husband brought his girlfriend to our house. And the officer said, well, I see how that could be a problem. Feel my heart getting stronger. Steady rising.